Um, good afternoon. Thanks to Chiara and Ben for the invitation to the conference. It's a real pleasure to come and talk. Uh, I'm going to talk about social media. Now, uh, before I do that, I'll just give you some background about the museum, just to place it in context. Which Heritage Museum advises is run by the Ar local archaeological society. We're a museum, we've got a, a library, an archive, and we also publish a counter's journal. We're an independent museum, and that's the key thing, I think. We're in Devizes, which is a small market town, less than 10,000 people, halfway between Stonehenge and Avery, in the middle of nowhere. Okay. That's the other important bit. Our collections are designated as a whole. Museum, library, archive. We are probably the first <coughs> designated museum, library, and archive. We were designated in the first round of designation when any museums were supposed to be done. Okay, we, are. Um, we cover the county, we're interested in Wiltshire. If it's not Wiltshire, forget it. We have the odd pile of rocks down the road, and we have some finds from them. So this is the gold lozenge from Bush Barrow, gold from the time of Stonehenge, as I say in my marketing speak. Just a few facts and figures for you to glance at. The ones I'd like you to, to concentrate on are the number of volunteer hours, the number of talks and events and so on we give, 5.7 FTE as of, as of Tuesday, we were at let open just over 5 FTE, which means you're talking to the director, uh, the chap who cleans the loos from time to time, clears the drains, you know, you name it, we do it. And one at the bottom, so we generate seven pounds for each one pound in grant. I think, Dan, I'm right in saying the VM probably generates about 60p for each one pound it gets in government grant. Something like that. Just to give you a bit of context. The spend that we get from the local authority is £35,000, of which £21,000 goes straight back towards the pension fund deficit, £7,000 in rates, and now £700 in uh, rubbish collection. That's our public funding. But even despite that, you see the spend per head in Wiltshire is 43 pence on New Zealand compared to £4.91 amongst as the average of our nearest neighbours as defined by the Department for uh, Communities and Local Government. So that gives you a bit of background. Our budgets, income expenditure, again, the one at the bottom, deficit. We're losing 60 grand a year, at least. We're working very closely with our colleagues in Stone, at Stonehenge and English Heritage because of the new visitor centre. This is what Stonehenge looks at, like at the moment, seen from the north with its very attractive car park. This is what it will look like in a couple of years' time because there's a new visitor centre that is now under construction. At the top is what it will look like. At the bottom is what it looked like about three weeks ago. But now there are almost at roof height on constructing the visitor centre. So, you know, it's full, full steam ahead. Going to open in October 2013. Okay. Working with our colleagues in Salisbury and in English Heritage, we too have plans for new displays that tie in with the visitor centre. We've got gold from the time of Stonehenge. Did I say that before? <laughs> <laughs> Which is a lifeline for the museum. At the moment we can't display it because of the security. Uh, we will be able to come May next year. So we're after the old tourist or two. Uh, this is roughly what it'll look like. So that's the background. Losing 60 grand a year, five and a bit people. What's the point of playing with technology? Now, when I was asked to do this talk um, by Chiara, I thought, great, I'll just do the stats of how many Facebook followers we've got and Twitter followers and so on and all the rest of it. And it'll be wonderful, but things have moved on, everyone's doing it, and I thought that was a bit dull. But here you are, here are the stats as we, as we were last night which is quite interesting. We compare that with the number of real-world members. Now, I, this is where I start to get really quite interested, because I can tell you things that I suspect, but with five and a bit people, there's no way I'm going to be doing the research. Our membership has held steady. Now, that may sound amazing and boring, but actually, most memberships have gone down between 10 and 20%. Why have we held steady, which actually is a 10, 20% increase over the last couple of years? Is social media deeper interaction with people than we know? Is that one of the reasons? 
Can I ask for a show of hands? Do we have how many Twitter or Facebook followers do I have here? Wow. This is what I started thinking. This is not the, you know just the numbers. It's actually who those followers are. So that was about fifteen. They're really interesting out of this group. So who are we getting the message over to? This is the standard stack from Facebook. Here you are. If this was real world, be, all the bars would be over on the right hand side because most of our members um, have got even greyer hair than I have. So our, our online membership, if you like, is much younger. And gender balance is there as well, which is good. Little case study. Half term, we have the opening of a new fossils exhibition, and as part of a trial, we went free. We, we charge, and we went free. Uh, reasons I won't bore you with. And we put this up on Facebook and Twitter and did some posters. Okay. Um, interestingly, on Facebook, on the right hand side, you see it generated some, some interesting comments, and we got a few retweets and so on. Now, Normally, we, we get about, this is the Twitter feed, normally, as you can see, we, this is from Crowdbooster, we get two, 3,000 people seeing each of our tweets, which is pretty good, but of course, you never know how many of those are real people and how many are actually reading them. So it passes across their Twitter feed. With the Fantastic Fossils exhibition, five people retweeted, nearly 7,000 people saw it. Brilliant. But what really struck me is, who those, some of those people were who retweeted that message. Um, these are two, but there are actually three. These are their names. I hope um, this, this may be something that we don't, uh, don't tweet, I'm identifying the guilty. Alan McRae, Mark Smith, and Victoria Pablo. Alan McRae is the Wiltshire Council Portfolio Holder for Culture, one rank below cabinet member. So he's actively promoting us the museum. That means, is he likely to cut us in the next budget round? Is he more likely because he knows what we're doing, or less likely because he knows what we're doing? I think you can work that out. Mark Smith, Service Director Finance. He brought his kids. Again, next budget round, which way do you think he would vote? And Victoria Barlow, a very supportive museum's manager. So she's actively promoting us to people she knows. Three people. Also, it's picked up by Sue Davis, who does a, a curator's choice slot every Wednesday on her afternoon show on BBC Wiltshire. And she's got, or they've got, I can't remember the numbers, it's about 3,000 followers. So again, gets the message out, completely different audience, we don't see it, I can't measure it. It also got picked up by two other people. The chap on the left, in the, the Hercules, is a reporter for the Western Daily Press, and the guy on the right is our the editor of our local newspaper. Now that generally only does stuff after they've happened. So they send along the photographer to photo the kids who are doing the activity not to cover the fact there's an activity happening in the first place, which would get more people in. However, over the last couple of months, we've suddenly realized that editorial policy, which is his, has started changing. We're getting things in before they happen now. Is that a result of him seeing what we're up to? I don't know. The paper also gives out grants. And we've just been told that it's highly likely we're about to get a grant. This is the third time I've, asked, I've tried to get money out of that particular fund. This time it looks like we've got it. Is the fact that the editor, who must have a say in this, is following us on Twitter and seeing what we're up to, is that another reason why we're getting get the grant? Let me introduce Mary Godwin. She is the relationship manager for the Arts Council in the Southwest. So she, again, is seeing what we're up to. She was very interested in the trial we were doing over free admission to see whether we've got more people in and can make more money out of them in the shop and donations. So we've got the Arts Council following. We're also very lucky. We've been awarded two lots of funding by the Arts Council this year as well um, for under the Strategic Fund and the Discrimination Development Fund. I wouldn't attribute those to Facebook, Twitter sort of thing. But 
It's about that continuing relationship with stakeholders, I think is, to me, is really interesting, something I hadn't thought of. Taking another step back slightly, we're also on TripAdvisor. And many of you, some of you are students with Tim and Shuffle Hall, some of you may in fact be coming to visit next Monday. And one thing I did was those of you, the students who are visiting, we, we can't charge you because you, you haven't got any money. But what we can, what we could do was ask you to rate the museum on TripAdvisor. Now, even today, we're number six for things to do in Wiltshire. After you guys had visited, first time, we were at number two below Salisbury Cathedral. Imagine what? The second best thing to do in the county. Uh, and no, no West Stonehenge's. Colleagues or anything. Once the business centre opens, it'll be completely different. But we've been hovering between four and eight for the last twelve months, and we're now getting genuine sort of responses. And I think the museum, to be honest, is pretty rubbish, and people still like it. <laughs> That's because I'm tearing apart. But they're all also. Visit Wiltshire is our local sort of destination management organisation. That's the posh way for saying that their job is to get people into the county for holidays to come and spend money. Um, I got volunteered to be on their online marketing group at the point when they were just looking at redeveloping their website. This is the new website. Note in the middle, this is slightly fortuitous, I did choose the right date, is an event from the museum. Would that be happening if they didn't, they didn't know about us? Perhaps not in the same way. But something I do know is absolutely definitely, because I was on Twitter, because I got on the online marketing group, is they've set up a specific page for museums in the county. Unfortunately, it's Salisbury Museum, they choose the picture, but at least we're credited down at the bottom. And we have a museum's presence that we didn't before. And I know that is a direct result of getting engaged in social media. The downsides. How on earth do I say that to my board? All that. Would they believe me? I can tell you the answer to that, and the answer is no. Can I point to feet through the door? A few. Ticket sales of events? A few. Is it enough to justify the time? And the answer is, if it was work time, a very big no. But it's not work time. I do it when I'm watching the TV telly in the evening, or eating a sandwich. It's a real problem, it's yet another channel. We used to do just posters, leaflets, and press releases. Now we do the website, and we do Facebook. Thankfully, I drive Twitter off Facebook, so I'm only doing one of the big platforms, not two. We also have YouTube and a couple of other things as well. But the particular problem also is who is speaking. I do it all, and I've got to, I need more people in the organization, volunteers, some of my colleagues, to be putting stuff up as well. But I want to maintain the voice. You know, it's slightly authoritative, slightly chatty, but it doesn't go off topic. And it doesn't get over friendly. So it's quite an interesting way of maintaining that view of the organization. Whether it's the right one almost doesn't matter. What I think is important is we appear consistent. What's coming next is going to be really interesting. We, I talked about our new galleries that will be opening in May 2013. We have some new research evidence from the University of Birmingham who has studied the collections in great detail that I won't bore you with. But what I will say is that once that story gets out, it will be a focus of global attention in the same way as the recent axe carvings found on the stones at Stonehenge were. And at that point, social media is critical because it's going to be our voice there is no way on earth I can get a press release out to New Zealand, the United States, or Japan to get people from there to come and visit my museum, to pay the entrance fee, to buy the stuff in the shop that saves us from going bust over five, in the next five years. Social media is a way of getting to those audiences. Thank you.